Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video, and in this video we're going to be continuing on with our C-Sharp programming tutorial series, and in this particular tutorial we are going to be taking a look at how we can actually create sub and base classes in a, using a practical example. So the, in this video we are actually going to do some coding, right? So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a person class and an employee class. Uh, if you would like, and in fact, I'm going to give you this challenge, after this video, create two subclasses of employee. I want you to create a manager, okay? A manager and a, uh, and you should also create a administrator class. Both of these should be derived classes or child classes of employee. Both of these classes should have their own unique properties to them. Okay? So, let's go ahead and begin. So in our person.cs class, what we're going to do is we're going to create this class. I need to go into VS Code here. And we can say public class person. Like this. Okay. Now, we're going to create, uh, we're going to go ahead and create some of this, uh, some of these uh, properties and whatnot that we need. Uh, we will say public person string name okay private string underscore name and here We'll have this dot underscore name equals name. Okay. So now we have our constructor public string name. get underscore name set underscore name equals value Okay. Okay, we should be okay in the formatting. All right. So now, now that we have our person class uh, created with our constructor and our property for name, we we don't need anything else for name, or rather for the person class, I should say. because this is just meant to be a base class, you know? It's supposed to be kind of a more general, uh, generalized class, whereas the children will have uh, properties of their own that are a little bit more specific to what they are for. Now, let's go ahead and save this. And we want to go into the employee CS file. In this file, 
we are going to create a public class called employee, but we're not done. Now, we need to do a colon. Okay, so public class employee space colon space, and then the name of the class that we want to inherit from. In this case, it is going to be person. Okay, open up the body for this class, and inside of this class, we're going to add, uh, we're going to add two properties. Or rather, no, we're just going to add one, and that's going to be the employee ID. So to do this, we can say public, or even or even better, private string underscore employee ID public employee string employee ID Inside of here, we can say this dot underscore employee ID equals employee ID. Okay, and then we can have the property um, of our employee ID, so public. string employee ID get set or rather I guess uh, we can open that up get underscore employee ID set equals underscore employee ID equals value. Okay. However, we're not done yet. We have created our property. We've created our field and we've linked the, pro the property and the field together in the way they should. We've initialized our, um, we've initialized our field with the property, or rather with the uh, argument we passed into its constructor. But, there's one issue. And that is we didn't call the super class. Why do we need to call the super class here? Well, we need to call the super, uh, the super class is initializer, AKA the base class is initializer, because we need to make sure that all of the properties that have to be initialized uh, in the inheritance hierarchy are initialized. So to do this, we need to say super open and closing parenthesis. And in here, we need to pass it the, uh, we need to pass it the name. Now, of course, we don't have a name in our constructor. So let's add it, string name. Uh, 
Okay, let's try that again. Super name. Like that. Okay, seriously, Visual Studio? Can you not do that? There. Okay. Okay. Now, actually, I'm again thinking in Java. <laughs> My apologies, guys. I'm I'm I've been doing some Java lately, and uh, yeah. Okay. So where we have our uh, our right parenthesis after our parameter list for our constructor, instead of saying super, we need to say. Um, space colon space base name like that and so with that now we have our constructor completed so what this base keyword does is it goes and calls the uh, base classes constructor. So we can't go inside of the body and call the base constructor. That's, let's get that out of the way right now. Uh, it has to be before the opening curly brace like this. And so that is our class. That's our employee class. Let's go ahead now and go into program CS. And in here, what we're going to do then is we are going to say person P equals a new person We'll say John Doe, like that. Okay, and we can say console right line p dot name. And then we can say employee, we'll call him E equals a new employee. We'll say J S four, 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 four. Okay. And then for the name, Jane Smith. Excuse me. And then we can say console right line E dot employee ID. And console dot right line e dot name. Okay, let's save that. 
and open our terminal. Here, we can then say .NET run. And there we go. We now have our uh, name property for our person object printed. And then we have our employee ID and name properties of our employee printed as well. Now, why is it that we're able to access the name property inside of employee? Because employee does not have a property defined within itself called name. Well, that's because employee inherits from person. When when a class, when employee inherits or yeah, when when uh, employee inherits from person and anything that is public within the the parent class is is uh, accessible to the child. So we're able to access the name property. And because we called the base constructor uh, with our constructor for employee, that name got initialized. So we were able to access it and not have any problems. So what if, if we go into our, into our program CS here, Let's create another person. Okay. Person P2 equals a new employee. And we'll say JD three 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 three, right? Okay. And then uh, John Doe. Okay. We can then go ahead and do a console dot write line p2 dot dot name. And a console right line p2 dot employee ID. Let's see, I want to make sure, okay. Now, you may notice that there is an error here. If we try to run our code, .NET run, you can see person does not contain a definition for employee ID. But if we do it the other way around, and we say employee E2 equals a new person. John Doe. Here Here you can see that trying to say employee E2 and then assigning it to a new person object doesn't work. 
Now, why is this? Well, it's because a person is an employee, but an employee is not a person, right? So you can, uh, so you can create a an object of of the parent and set it equal to a new instance of the child, but you cannot create an object of the, of the child class and set it to a new instance of its parent. C sharp will not let you do that. But why did we see that error with employee ID? Well, that's because C sharp inherited that P2 object that we created as a person object, not an employee despite setting it to a new instance of employee. And so that's why the employee ID uh, didn't work. That's why we couldn't get the employee ID. We would have had to have uh, cast it to uh, that person object to an employee, and then we would have been able to access it. But we didn't do that. Right, so that pretty much does it for this video on how uh, on how we can go about creating base and subclasses in C sharp. Thank you all so very much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.